Hello. No, you're Alex. Can you hear me? Yeah, I've got you, yeah. All right, uh, Stephen. So uh, my name is Said Fala. I'm the head coach of Fala Cricket Academy. Along with, I have uh, the uh, co-founder and the CEO of Marata Cricket League, John Vinson. Right. So I was just uh, <laughs> uh, so I, uh, I would uh, I was just uh, you know going with the introduction part. So let's hear it from you first. Like uh, I do understand that you have a very vast profile uh, when we talk when we look at it. But then it would be uh, I would be more you know interested in hearing it from you. How you started? Where did we land up? And all that stuff. Well, so how I started going in into cricket or coaching or, or a bit of both? Yep, go, go ahead Steve, we are listening to you. Hi, yeah, so I've been a, well, been a professional cricketer now for 17 teams uh, at Lancashire and uh, yeah, it started, started for me, uh, well cricket started for me when I was a youngster in Sri Lanka of all places. My family moved there. When I was seven years old, so that was my first exposure to cricket, really. I was football mad before then, so I didn't really pick up a cricket bat until then. So uh, cricket was all I played for three years. And then coming back to the UK, uh, that was that was all, well, I, I juggled both. But I, was, I was quite good at cricket from, from having that exposure in Sri Lanka. So I joined up with Blackpool Cricket Club, uh, started playing in the, in the senior side at 13, and then the district side for Lancashire at, at about 13, 14. And, Got into the Lancashire Cricket Academy at 17, 18 years old, and yeah, signed professional from then. And then it's been sort of a within county cricket quite a steady journey, really, from from second team up to first team player, uh, then getting my first team, and then uh, being a club captain for Lancashire in 2015. Uh, to now, yeah, one of the, one of the senior players, more towards the back end. Of my, my career, but uh, but yeah, I've got a, a real fondness for coaching. I'm currently on the level four uh, ECB scheme from, uh, and especially when it's when I was captain, it, that's where I got my the, the passion for coaching. Really seeing how you can help players, uh, not just on the field but off it, uh, especially mentally, is something I, I'm really enjoying at the minute. And the last sort of three or four years, I've been working with our academy and our EP in the winters, and uh, something I'm really enjoying and. Especially juggling a bit of juggling a bit of both of cricket and coaching, it, it's helping me with my cricket, especially knowing that hopefully there's a future there after my cricket in in, in coaching, and I'm sort of enjoying juggling both of them at the minute. Yeah, hi, uh, Stephen. Hi, Ryan. Uh, yeah, hi, say brother. Yeah, this is Vincent John, and uh, I'm representing India's first cricket reality show, that is Maratha Cricket League MCL T20. It's a T20 tournament, and uh, it wasn't a tournament. It's a reality show, first of its kind. Like we are, uh, we have uh, gone through 10,000 cricketers, young cricketers, amateur cricketers, actually across India, and out of them, we have a shortlisted around 156 cricketers, and, and they will be playing in uh, 10 teams and choices of MCL T20. So it is more about like finding the raw talents and to give them a platform to showcase their skills. So uh, we are into that particular process. 
and it was supposed to be started in the month of May and uh, just two days back the final match was supposed but somehow uh, we all have to shut our uh, you know we all have to stop our uh, proceedings um, due to this pandemic and each and every part of the world is affected by this particular pandemic so what to do now so we are post we have postponed it till November and December positively we will conduct it in November December so that was all from my side regarding MCL and uh, Sahib brother is also a part of MCL as he is the jury member of MCL so uh, Stephen I have, I have gone through your uh, profile uh, really super man you have contributed a lot to the county team and uh, literally uh, like you know <clears throat> To speak with uh, a talented player like you, actually, it's a pleasure to speak with, with you. You know why? The reason is we all are cricketers. It doesn't matter in which particular, uh, you know, in which particular state or in, uh, in which particular, uh, I want to say, in which particular level we are representing cricket. What matters is we are representing cricket. So that is, right. that, that is why we all are united. All right. So uh, coming back to Stephen, like Stephen, um, I do understand that you have initiated some kind of coaching activities. So uh, let's talk about your engagement with the coaching activities which you are doing right now. How has it been and what kind of initiations have you done after the pandemic? Yeah, so mainly just trying to stay connected with your players, really. Uh, so yeah, the, the players I've been working with are uh, academy and EPP. So around sort of 14 to 18, 19 year old mark. So yeah, just just trying to stay connected really, because obviously we can't do any physical work yet together. So yeah, just reiterating what I've been working on in the past, and 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 almost having a, a good balance of yes, you want to keep keep working on on cricket things but also working on on stuff away from cricket as well sort of mental side of things and and just the health and well-being of, of of players really so yeah first and foremost making making sure everyone's healthy and well and uh ha and does have a, a little bit of a distraction away from cricket which i can find and, and vouch for myself it, it's helped me personally and other players that having a, a slight interest or, or interest outside of cricket does help so yeah first and foremost sort of trying to trying to be a coach without actually getting getting hands on and, and actually meeting players so yeah going up going on a, a lot of past sort of past experiences and, and, and previous sessions that you can sort of relate to and, and, and working forward having having a plan really so planning out whenever that might be, when we're going to start, that what, what the future looks like and, and whether that would be hopefully a few weeks of training to then go in a, a shorter season or it might just be once again the season's gone and then it's a longer pre-season to next season. So having a bit of a plan for either this year or next year is going to help. And then, uh, yeah, trying to, trying to do the best as we can of doing some slight drills, whether it be on their own or, or I think you can, you can practice with a family member now. So it's tricky, but uh, I think it's, uh, like I said, the cricket community is going to come together and there's a lot of stuff out there that we can all keep working on as well. So honestly, like um, how many matches did you have uh, during this pandemic situation? Like, I'm just curious to understand, like uh, whether you guys have initiated cricket or you're still in a, that kind of a phase to initiate the cricket. Yeah, so our season didn't start, so we, uh, we we obviously got locked down in March, so we didn't didn't have any cricket. We were just about to kick off uh, the season in England, so the county teams were just about to, to go on pre-season tour. Uh, we were lucky enough at Lancashire, we went to Mumbai and got a week's training in there. Uh, but yeah, for, for the, the, the age group I was working with, they, they had no tours and the season was just about to kick off, so they haven't played cricket a game since September. So it's everyone was itching to get back out there and, and really looking forward to the start of the season and obviously nothing we can do about the, the pandemic and it's very unfortunate but I suppose we're all in the same boat there's, there's not been much cricket anywhere in the world really so we're all 
going to get out there. All right. So, uh, John, uh, a few added points towards the uh, pandemic, which we are looking at. So you being a tournament organizer and also the founder of a tournament, how hard has it been uh, to you know, accommodate the players or even collect the players to be on one particular platform? Uh, I believe this is, uh, this is not, the, uh, not only for us, not only for the cricketers. In fact, it is the hardest time this generation is facing this particular year, 2020. And it was very hard to find out such talent I mean, all of them are exceptional talents. More than that, it is more difficult to hold them, to keep them alive, to keep their passion alive during this lockdown period or pandemic period. To make them understand, to make them believe that yes, we'll do it. Hold down till November, December, we'll do it. So how this pandemic has affected is uh, particularly it has affected to the uh, you know mindset of the player. Most of the times, player used to, at least they used to take drills. But now in India, the scene was uh, from last three months, the scene was like we all uh, were in a lockdown phase, you know. So no one was able to do uh, drills as well. No one was able to do their uh, regular practice. And that has affected the mindset of the players. Um, I think uh, whatever, whether it may be a tournament or whether it may be, uh, you know, uh, any 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 big uh, any any big uh, program mindset is the key and that this pandemic has affected the mindset of the players so it's a very big loss from my point of view right so uh, Ryan uh, do we have you here or how is it with you Ryan that's clear I'm not sure if you got to hear me mate. I believe uh, your internet is really playing tricks today. Uh, unfortunately, I, we cannot even understand what you're saying. Uh, in which ways? Uh, so coming back to Steve, uh, Steve, uh, I would like to discuss something about the uh, you know guidelines which has been released by ICC for dealing to Corona uh, versus cricket. And I've been discussing with uh, this, this same point with many other cricketers, hoping for one particular concrete answer. And the question is uh, that they say that no more saliva or sweat for a bowler. So that, you know, kind of creates a lot of question for a bowler because he or she has a habit to, you know, shine the ball all the time from the first ball itself of a match. So be T20, be test cricket, be 50 overs, whatever format we are talking about, we are talking about no salivas and no sweats. So uh, although, you know, we all know that the uh, cricket is a batting friendly game till date. So you know, also there are power plays in picture and now no saliva. So again, it creates a lot of questions of the survival mode of a baller, especially um, medium pace or pace. So your takes on that, what do you think about it? Yeah, I think it's going to be, it's going to be tough for the bowler. And like you said, it's, it's, it's going to be habit as well. I think some people, a bowler will naturally take the ball and start shining it with saliva. It's, it's what they've done. But some of them have done it probably tens of thousands of times. So it's going to, it's going to be tough. Uh, just remind themselves to do that. But yeah, I think once, once we're, we're back in full swing and if there's no saliva or sweat on the ball, it's definitely going to be, be tough for these bowlers because it's it's what they rely on as well. If you haven't got express pace, uh, your accuracy is going to have to come into it a lot more. So you could see it, see it as a positive that you're going to have to upskill as a bowler to to be more accurate and and, and not leave your line and length. Uh, reverse swing could come into it a bit more as well, possibly with uh, with no saliva on the ball. Uh, but I think it's going to be the same. It's going to be the same for everyone as well. So there's, there's going to be no advantages to one team to another. But uh, but yeah, I think trying to stay on the positive side of it, it's hopefully going to help help the bowlers with with more accuracy, with with a bit of less swing or lateral movement. Either way, you're going to you're going to have to rely on your skills of, of being really accurate. And uh, 
yeah, there's, there's some services that are going to be really tough to bowl on, and uh, we might see a bit more spin involved. Uh, uh, we don't know, but it's, it's going to be a tricky time when we do get out there. Right, right. So, Ryan, how is it with your network right now? Can you hear us? Uh, I, I, I'm outside and trying again, so uh, I hope this works. <laughs> At last, I'd love to hear you bright and clear, and also on the uh, Perfect. <laughs> so, Ryan, uh, let's start with... Uh, so let's start with your introduction first. I do understand that there is a lot to talk about when, it, when we talk on papers, but then I would like to hear it on from you. Uh, yeah, well, you know, my, I guess my story is uh, a little bit uh, a bit different. Uh, you know, I started obviously my cricket in in Australia and and followed the the right pathway, so to speak. Um, and was lucky enough to play in Australian cricket when you know probably at its peak, I, I guess, through those mid-90s and early 2000s when we had that amazing test team and, you know, the, the, the first-class system was working so well. Uh, and from there, I actually, I wasn't actually going to be a coach, to be honest. I, I did all my level three coaching certificates and all that, but, you know, I was snapped up pretty quickly by the media and, and I was working, you know, TV, radio, uh, all sorts of things, and I actually became too busy. So I, I retired quite early to, to move into the media, but um, in a weird twist, I sort of got dragged back into it and, and was offered a, a great job in Hong Kong and, you know, working with the national team there and, and Kowloon Career Club, which is, you know, hosted, I guess, the, the Hong Kong Sixers for, for years and years, which is probably one of the great cricket grounds of the world where I think it's valued at 1.5 billion US dollars or something, the actual ground, which is quite amazing. But, um, you know. It's it's been a, it's been a great journey for me, and, and from my work in Hong Kong, you know, I was um, approached by the Netherlands if I would apply for the job, and and you know, it, it was a great opportunity. In a twist of fate, again, my, my wife is actually Dutch, so to come back to come to the Netherlands was a great opportunity for us. And you know, I was taking over a pretty good team. Uh, let's you know, I don't say that I have, I've had the answers to everything, but you know, the, the squad was well known for you know performing on the big stage and. I guess for me, it was a matter of trying to get the depth of talent a little bit further. And I think you've seen that over the last couple of years with, with Dutch cricket, you know, winning the World Cup qualifiers and, you know, being in the Super League and, you know, disappointing with this pandemic. Obviously, we were supposed to play Pakistan this year and New Zealand and all sorts of teams. So it's been disappointing, but we're getting there. Like, like everyone, everyone's had their limitations and, you know, everyone, we're, we're lucky. We're, we're actually one of the few... Um, countries in Europe where we've been managed to be able to be outside um, so our players can train twice a week. Obviously, it's it's dialed back and we, we're being very careful, but, you know, we actually have trained. And Saturday, we actually played our first inter-club or inter-squad match, so to speak. So, you know, we're going. Obviously, our summer program has been decimated. And like England, you know, they're, they're still waiting for, for what's going on. And, um, you know, we just got to keep our fingers crossed. And, you know, we're still preparing for a World Cup in Australia in October. And if it goes ahead, we're, you know, we're ready to go. But, you know, the the, the drums are beating not very well in, in the direction that the World Cup's going to be put on. Right, right, right. So uh, I was just uh, asking a question to uh, Stephen about uh, the latest ICC guidelines for anything to the cricket. And... Uh, there are like uh, six or more guidelines which we are looking at, but the main guideline which kind of you know tips us uh, tips us out, like me being a bowler and even me, my brother, uh, we being a bowler, <clears throat> we kind of think it's very dicey that you are not allowed to use your sweat or your spit to shine the ball. So although uh, already the you know the, we all know that the cricket has become more bat batting friendly game, and as in how it progresses, it becomes more and more friendly towards that particular game. So uh, also the power plays is in, uh, are are already in the picture, and now that you are not allowed to use saliva. So I would like to understand. Like I've been asking this question to most of the cricketers around the world, and I would like to understand that uh, particular point of view from your end as well. Like, what do you think about it? And what is a turnaround to that particular point? Yeah, it's, it's, it's an interesting one. Now, uh, you guys have to take this the right way. But to, to us right now, it's almost like we're going to play in India because 
you know, when, when opposition teams get to India, you're told over and over and over again about you're not quite sure of what the water is used on the ground. If you're putting your hands near your mouths, you, you may get sick or something like that. So to be honest, when we go to India, we don't use saliva to shine the balls. We actually use sweat. So for us at the moment, it's a kind of a continuation of, of that. And it's not just, um, sorry, it's not just, you know, India. If we went to Bangladesh, it would be the same. It's, it's certain countries that obviously we're, we're not 100% sure about. And our medical advice is given to us that that's how we got to do it. So, you know, the, the, the obviously a white ball, we only play white ball cricket, the Netherlands. So, you know, we're always using white balls. And to be honest, you can't really shine them too much. You, you know, you, you, you're trying to look after them as best you can. But it's actually in today's one day cricket, as you've spoken about, it's such a batter friendly game. You're actually trying to go the other way. We're trying to hack the ball up as much as we can. We want it to get old and as old and as dirty as possible, literally in 25 overs, because you have two from, you know, one from each end. So it doesn't get hit as hard and it's not as easy to hit boundaries in the back end. So, look, that, that's, our, that's our take on it. If you ask me as an Australian who was brought up, you know, as a wicketkeeper watching our bowlers work very hard on balls, it, it's a tough thing to tell the bowlers now you can't use sweat. But like most, we'll come up with ways. I've no doubt. I'm saying we, and that sounds makes me sound like I use sandpaper or something. I, I'm not one of those Australians. But, you know, I, I think what, what county cricket, if the championship goes ahead, I think it won't take long for bowlers to work out ways of doing it with sweat and, and, you know, making sure that the ball can be shined. Right, right. Uh, quite uh, quite uh, rightly placed over there. So, John, uh, coming to your point, like I do understand that you're nurturing a lot of talents and many players under your tournament's umbrella. So, I do understand there will be a lot of bowlers having the same kind of question. So, have you ever, you know, come across such bowlers asking you these kind of questions, like where where do we stand? How does the tournament progresses? And uh, with this particular picture, uh, you know, guidelines and picture, what happens to a fast bowler? Uh, yes, uh, first of all, uh, Ryan, your answer was uh, some, somewhat different from the others. We have discussed the very same question and <laughs> uh, it was interesting as well. Anyhow, uh, being a fast bowler myself, uh, as, I, as I used to tell always, Said brother, you know, uh, using saliva or sweat during the bowling, it is in our nature and, you know, uh, you can change the rules. You can change the way you play, but it is very difficult to change the particular mindset and nature of a bowler. So, <clears throat> yes, I came across a lot of questions regarding the new ICC guidelines and I came across uh, a lot of uh, questions from uh, our uh, players' mind, like uh, how to pop up with the situation now, how to, uh, you know, uh, manipulate the things according to uh, the new guidelines. All I said, now stop thinking about applying saliva or sweat to the ball till ICC is going to make some another, uh, another announcement here like yes there is some sort of wax that you can use as uh, Robert was telling yesterday or there was uh, there is some uh, you know new kind of substance uh, which ICC will allow or else changing of the ball in a particular uh, time span of hours will do so, <clears throat> so right now in fact, I am also in not a particular state to tell any, to make any statement that yes, we can do this or we can't. Uh, the only thing which I can say is it is very difficult to change the nature of code. So that's what from my side on this particular saliva uh, question. Great, John. Great. So, Steve, uh, coming to you, uh, I would like to understand uh, like most of the cricket players across the globe, I would say. They are adapting to the uh, virtual method of cricket coaching or you know cricket practices. So, is there some kind of engagement or initiations which you have adapted on your end? Yes. Yeah, so, we, well, we actually started messing last week, which was uh, which was great. Um, obviously, all the coaches and yeah, the bowlers uh, on our side, we all get our, they all get their own balls, so only they're allowed to touch that box of balls. 
And similar like when we're fielding, we get a couple of balls and no one, no one else can touch that. The coach has to wear a rubber glove and one mitt. Uh, it looks a bit like a, a hospital scene at times with people sticking gloves on and, and, and things like that. But it's, it, it's, a very, it's a very strange world at the minute, but it, it's just great to get back out there. We've, we've almost been, been inside for, for three months nearly, but it's just great getting a ball back in your hands. And yeah, especially with the batting as well. I, we got told we, we don't touch the ball when we're batting. We just have to kick it along the floor. Uh, back to the to the to the flicker or the bowler, which seems a bit unnatural. You want to try and help them out, and yeah, a couple of us made a mistake, kicked the ball up our first ball and threw it back. And well, things like that, I'm just going to have to get used to, and 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 I'm sure we'll we'll all get used to it. And we're just really happy to to be back out there, and and not just obviously us at Lancashire and in the UK, the, the cricketing world. I think we've all missed watching cricket. Uh, I've seen enough highlights now of all previous World Cups, the ITC tournaments, and uh, it's time to get some, some new cricket on, on the television because it's, uh, it, it's, a, it's a great sport that unites the whole world together. So it, it's going to be different for sure. There's going to be some adaptations of, 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 of things, like you said, like the ball. And, but I'm pretty sure we'll get our heads around it and just be grateful we're, we're just going to get out there and hopefully get some cricket soon. So uh, coming to Ryan, Ryan, don't you think like... Um... Like uh, first and foremost, I would like to apply the same question to you as well. Like, have you adapted for any kind of virtual activities for your squad of Netherlands, like to keep them busy about, with the engagements of cricket? Yeah, well, it, it has been different. I, I think um, with the advent of Zoom and all these things, you are, you are doing a lot more over the over the phone so to speak sometimes your internet works and you can actually talk to your players but um you know the um the, the facts are that like i say we've been lucky because we actually are, are back at training and it is, has been weird you know working out like you say we, i've got a, a surgical glove on one hand and i've got a mitt on the other and you know sometimes you wear a face mask for certain things and um, what i will say is whatever anyone says about what we're going through it's obviously a tough thing but Cricket has always survived. You know, we've had issues in the past. Not, not that we've seen something like this globally, but the facts are it's a great adapter. You know, we, we see a T20 tournament come about, then T10 and, or something. There was body line at one point. There was this, there was that. Everyone will adapt. And, and I've no doubt when everyone, at the, eye, the, the eyes of the world will be watching this England versus West Indies series. Um, and, and people will pick things up and they'll try different things. And, you know, like I say, me as a coach, I'm actually a bit, I know, again, don't take this the wrong way. I'm a bit touchy feely because, you know, when I'm talking batting, I actually kind of grab a guy by the shoulder or, you know, just trying to grab his hands and saying, you know, we want to try a little bit like this, but I've actually found myself, I have to take a backward step and make sure I'm not within the 1.5 meter barriers and, you know, how do I work? Where do we put our wicket keepers? How do we work with our wicket keepers if I can't sort of explain things and sort of show them with their hands? So, yeah, everything's changed, no doubt. But like I say, I think the one thing we're great at at cricket, and that's with everyone around the world, is we adapt. And we'll adapt to this. We, you know, we'll, we'll watch other people. And I've watched them playing in Vanuatu, and I don't reckon anyone would have watched cricket in Vanuatu ever. But because we've been starved of live sport, like Steve was saying, and I had a watch. I thought it was fantastic. And they, they had adapted things as well. So, like I say, I, I think we'll come out the other end. And, you know, as the world comes out of this, you know, whole COVID-19 crisis, we, you know, the, the game will still be there and it will come back and it'll come back stronger than ever. Right, Ryan. So, yeah, uh, we do have the same kind of, you know, point of view from all across that it is just a temporary thing which is happening. And somewhere down the line, we will come to that particular stage when everything would be stabilized or normalized and we'll be back to the game. And obviously, uh, uh, I was discussing the same point with Deep Das Gupta uh, a week ago. And he had a very you know, beautiful point towards cricket, saying that it is the game which has a very great number of social distancing in its own world. Like You don't see that kind of social distancing in wrestling, or boxing so cricket has that kind of social distancing yes there are certain rules which needs to be applied because of the saliva and the sweat part but uh, apart from that everything is different so 
uh, coming to the other uh, other question which I have for Stephen, uh, we, we do understand that we are all athletes over here, which we are talking about, and we kind of, uh, you know, bank on our rhythm, okay? We always feel that, okay, our rhythm is going great, our performances are going great. So once, like, you have a gr great run, scoring runs or taking wickets, and suddenly there is a lockdown, like, for 90 days, uh, totally back to normal you're totally back to zero so what's your plan of action to start off with where you left so yeah my advice would be obviously if you're taking the positive side of it is, is yes the batters or yourself have not been in form or, or have the chance to play but it's, it's similar with the bowlers as well so the bowlers haven't had any any, any rhythm and that's probably just as tough uh, as well so i think as a batter as well, every time you go out there, every game, you, you have the mindset of you starting again. Sometimes it's nice to have 100 behind you or if you're coming out at lunch or tea with a few on the board, it obviously helps uh, with, with your rhythm and, and obviously confidence. But, but yeah, as a batter, you're always going to the crease with a mindset of you're on, you're on zero for, for this session or, or this game where, yeah, like I said, looking at the positives, the bowlers are going to have to get up, up to speed and up to rhythm as well, especially over in England. Some some clubs haven't started training yet. Uh, we've had a slight advantage that uh, we've had some, some good facilities away from old Emirates Old Trafford to, to get some practice in already. So I think, yeah, if you're looking on the positive side, the bowlers haven't had as much rhythm as the batters as well. It's an equal playing field in that sense. So, yeah, it, it, it's one of them. You have to try and start from, from zero and, and, and there's just to it's just as, as tough for a bowler. I mean, you should you should do a little bit of it myself. Uh, but yeah, it's 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 not like they've been getting a, a heads up over the batters. And uh, but yeah, I have that mindset of of, of, of every time you get getting a bat in your hand going out to the crease, you, you start on zero anyway. And yes, I think it might take a little bit more time to to get that fluidity or rhythm at times. But uh, but yeah, that's the way I see it. Right. So uh, I would like to hold John for a bit and come back to Ryan again for the same kind of question because right now I'm talking to a coach, that is Ryan, and so I want to understand from a coaching aspect, like how do you boost your players for like somebody who is scoring runs, taking wickets, and suddenly there is a lockdown, and after 90 days or whatever days of lockdown, the person comes back to the ground. So how, do you, how does he or she take his game from where he or she has left? Uh, yeah, mate, it, it's a tough one. And like I say, I, I think that it could be up to a year before we play. Our last game was the, uh, the World Cup qualifiers in October. And, you know, there may be a chance we don't play until at least after October. And, you know, we went into that. We won eight of nine games. We were in peak form. We wanted to play the World Cup the next day, to be honest. But, um, you know, it, it is tough. It, it's going to go... Everyone's going to go through periods. It's actually getting guys back playing cricket. And, and that's the thing. We're lucky here in the Netherlands where we have seven of our players are in county systems. And, you know, they're in county teams. And, and they're going through what Stephen's going through now. And, you know, they're trying to go through the process of getting ready and getting ready to play. But... Oh, I think what you'll find is that the batters with the greatest craft, the ones who use their brain, you know, and again, what I, when I'm sort of talking about that, I, I think the day of T20 has also unleashed this, these brazen young fellows who whack the ball so hard, but they actually have lost a bit of the craft. They don't know how to go about the starting. If the ball's swinging and all that, it is a bit tough for them. So that's where it's going to be tough. The guys with the best minds and the games and, and have a complete overview of their craft, I think will get back quicker because they can go through the checklists and go, okay, yep, 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 this is going well. And that away they'll go. Whereas, you know, some of the batters in particular who are pretty hard at it, mate, they might get knocked over a couple of times early on in, in the resumption and it could be a while before, you know, they really get back into it. So, and it'd be the same with the bowlers. It's those ones who can go through their checklists and make sure that everything feels as normal as possible and then just get in the battle. Uh, you know, we're, we're big on you just got to get in the fight. Somehow, you know, if you're not feeling great, I, I think Shane Warne said to me once that, you know what, I probably felt perfect three out of every 10 times I, I bowled. 
And, you know, if that's coming from Shane Warne, the rest of us mortals are probably never feeling great when they're bowling. So you just got to find a way and you got to get in the fight. And I, I think that's the thing that I would say to all of my players or any player out there. How am I going to get into the fight, bat or ball, even though I'm not feeling great, I've got to be in. I've got to be in the game. So, you know, I think that's where the old upstairs is going to come into it. Rightly said, Brian. So coming to John, um, I believe uh, you have some questions from your players for our guest today. So can you please go ahead and, you know, put put them one after one by one? Yes, sure. Yes, sure, sure, sure. Thanks a lot for uh, allowing me to say, brother. And uh, first of all, as I always used to uh, make some uh, comments on the host, uh, on the guest, sorry. So coming to Stephen, Stephen, I believe, uh, I mean, the particular picture which I gone through of yours in Wikipedia and Google, and uh, uh, somehow, somewhat, you are looking uh, quite different now. So you are looking more like a Hollywood actor. And uh, <laughs> well, plenty of uh, time to groom over these uh, these last few weeks. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I'm having a lot of questions from our players. And so uh, here is a question from. Aman Dhyani and the question uh, I'd like to ask uh, Ryan, how to improve timing and how to uh, play with new ball in swinging conditions if uh, I'm not a particular batsman, I'm not a, specifically uh, if I'm not a batsman, then how to cope up with the situation and how to improve timing with the new ball if I have never played with new ball. Yeah, okay. So then obviously that's the pretty, well, some would say the toughest time to bat is when the ball's swinging around. But I think it comes down to technique again, hitting, playing the ball nice and late and not trying to overhit it. And you know, I sort of touched on it just before that. I think the, a big issue in today's players is that sometimes they're just trying to hit it so hard that they actually get out of position. Their body parts aren't working together and, and basically they're very reliant on throwing their hands through the ball. So... You know, I always like to go back to the old ways of just taking it nice and easy, relaxing, not trying to hit the ball a million miles an hour. It's just literally getting the mechanics right. Get the head forward, get the feet moving, and not trying to overhit the ball. It's the only thing you can do. In fact, sometimes it's good to go back to very basics. And, you know, before you have a you know day's play, get a simple, get some throwdowns, underarms and stuff, and just making sure you're feeling the mechanics are right. And, and once the mechanics are in place, then again, it's now, then it's up to the old, the old man upstairs to take control of, of the situation. I'm having a question to Ria from Ritik Bharati. He's from Maharashtra. <clears throat> and his question is, what should be the uh, current generation focus on uh, mostly the cricket so that they can improve their cricketing skills and get more success? As day by day cricketing... Uh, Cricketing factors are getting changed, and day by day, new rules are getting changed in the cricket as per ICC. So, what should be the current generation focus on? Oh, mate, like, like, like we spoke about before, like at the moment, the ICC can tinker a little bit with the rules just to try and get us through this moment, but the game will always go back to being the same. So, I, I wouldn't be getting you know, spending so much time worrying about all the new things and the what ifs and that, I would just back to the basics. Use this time to become a better player. Yes, you're not playing cricket, maybe, but if you can train, if you can read, if you can learn things, and I think all of us as people, as individuals, not just as cricketers, I think one thing that we can get over the, out of this COVID-19 situation is become better people and become you know, better at, at something you want to do. You know, for me, I've had to be a, um, a parent to my, not a parent, but a, a school teacher to my four and a half year old. And, you know, that, that's been quite interesting, you know, because he goes to Dutch schooling, but I've had to learn to help, you know, him out. So for me, it's about learning and becoming better now. You know what? You don't have to play the game of cricket to become a better cricketer in the meantime. So think about the basics. Make sure that when you look at, the, at your game, are your basics there? Are, are your fundamentals there? Are the, are the checkpoints being able to be ticked off? So there's lots we can work on when we're not playing the game. Uh, Ryan, first of all, uh, I, mean, I appreciate 
and I understand that you have spent a lot of time in cricket, and I appreciate that you, uh, you know, made in a in, in an international team at the age of 44. Uh, really salute for you, uh, salute to you. Uh, now uh, I'm 36 and uh, I can't run fast. So, yeah. <laughs> And uh, it is, it is, you know, like uh, it is a very big thing if you come back in your forties and you did it for an for an international team, though. So you have seen a lot of ups and downs, and you have seen a lot of things in cricket up to a long period. And uh, you were into the, I mean, you were you were in that particular era of Adam Gilchrist, and uh, uh, as I think you were, you were, you know, you were playing in the Australian team in absence of Adam Gilchrist in that particular time. So, yep. isn't it? Yeah, yeah, that's right. I, I actually played in the same, you know, we were in the same state team as well in, in WA. So, for me to get into the team, I actually had to work on my batting to the point where I opened the batting with Michael Hussey and, and Gilly would bat at seven. And then when Gilly went away with the test team or the one day team, I would have to take over the gloves again and slide down or, or open the batting and keep. So, yeah, there, there were ways and means. And I uh, do understand. Uh, like uh, in this in this you know long period, you have collected a lot of experiences in different uh, aspects of cricket. As I'll rather say, you are a perfect all rounder. You're a wicket keeper, you're a batsman, and uh, you are a bowler as well. Yeah, so, yeah, that, 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 was, <laughs> that was a bit strange. <laughs> so uh, one uh, question is there for you. Which moment, and the question has been asked by Hitesh Patel, Hitesh Patel from Gujarat, India. His yep. question is, which moment uh, has cherished you more playing for Australian cricket team or playing for uh, Hong Kong international cricket team at the age of 44? Yeah, well, uh, hello to him because I actually, in a weird world, I actually played in the ICL for one year and I played for the Gujarat the Ahmedabad Rockets, and we were based in Gujarat, so I know that place very well. Um, look, it, it, at, at the end of the day, playing for Australia was, you know, the ultimate prize for me. It was, you know, a thing where, you know, you'd work so hard for. Obviously, like I said before, we, we were in the, probably the greatest era of Australian cricket and, and the standards. You know, the the games Queensland versus New, for WA at times were were told that they were better than test cricket at the time. So, you know, to be just to be in that era was fantastic. And then to get the call up in Gilly's absence when he had a day off, pity he didn't have a test match off because he played 96 of those in a row, which I was uh, sitting behind. Um, but, you know, playing for Australia, you know, my mum and dad flew across to Sydney for the game. And, you know, that will always stand to me as the, my greatest ac accomplishment. You know, playing for Hong Kong was fantastic. Don't get me wrong. I, I was... You know, up there, I was asked to play as the, I was the batting coach and assistant coach. And, you know, I still had to play when I was working for Kowloon. So, you know, the, the coach was adamant that, you know, I was still the best batter in Hong Kong and I needed to help them out. So, you know, I, I kind of relented at the end of the day and said yes to it. But look, would I have loved to have been 10 years younger? A absolutely. But, you know, I can tell my kids one day that uh, I opened the batting and opened the bowling at a, at a World Cup. And, you know, that, that's, a, that's a story that, that it can come with me. But it also gave me great experiences of how the different cultures work as well. Because, you know, when you're talking about the big teams, you know, Australia, India, and we come from that place, you know, you just think cricket's easy. And you think the first class system, there's money, there's everything done. It's, it's awesome. It's not until you go to the associate world where you see the struggles, you know, how do we get the more money to pay for turf balls, for instance. How, how do we get to play more? How do we tour? How do we do this? And, you know, working in the associate world has really opened my eyes to that. And I really enjoy that battle all the time. And, and I love, no disrespect to Steve, but I love when I see Scotland beat England, um, you know, or the Dutch beat England, or anyone beating, you know, the outside world. Because, you know, in my humble opinion, yes, the big teams and the, and the big countries, yes, they bring the money to the to the game of cricket and they're awesome at it. But we do have a responsibility to spread the game. And, you know, those those teams in Nepal and Oman and the Netherlands, Scotland, the USA now, it, it, they're going really well. Mate, there are people out there. They're playing everywhere. As I mentioned, Vanuatu. And we, as the big countries, 
need to push that. And, and, and I think sometimes we forget that. Oh, wonderfully answered by you. And uh, I do understand that right now you are uh, coach of the Dutch team. And though uh, Netherlands cricket is not, uh, you know, a very new thing to Netherlands. Cricket is not a very new thing for the Dutch. But still, I mean, uh, you are giving your efforts to uh, the Dutch team, which is, you know, somewhat underrated, I, I believe. And also, as you have played for Hong Kong, it was uh, it, it it was emerging and uh, it was into emerging stage, and uh, you were a big name in that particular team in the World Cup, T20 World Cup 2016. So <clears throat> you are, as I told you, that uh, you are having a lot of experiences with you, as you have already spent a lot of time in cricket. So <clears throat> one more question yes. from yes. one of our player. He's Rishab Meena from Rajasthan. Yeah. yeah Sorry, I, 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 I've got a little one with me. Hello, baby. <laughs> you say hello? Hello, baby. Sorry about that. <laughs> <laughs> What's her name? Now, this is Emily. Hi, Emily. Okay, so Thank we all... We also have Steve back on track. So, uh, if John, if you were welcome back, Steve. Your mind. Welcome back, Steve. Sorry about that. <laughs> so, uh, shall I continue asking with Ryan, or shall I? Uh, yeah, just, uh, let's complete with Ryan first. Or, I mean, Ryan first, and then we can uh, move to Steve with the pending questions which you wanted to ask. Cool. So, uh, Ryan, the question is from uh, one of our players. He is uh, Rishabh Meena from uh, Rajasthan, Jaipur, Rajasthan. And his question is, what mindset we should keep while batting at the fifth down? Well, I, I, think, I think every time you go into bat, you need to know where the team situation is and, and what, the, what does the team need for, from you. Um, you know, that's the way I've always believed in playing and that's the way I always believe in coaching. It's, it's not always about you today. It's about what does my team need from me? Obviously, each player has their own strengths and weaknesses. And, you know, let, let's be honest, when we're, we're talking about five down, generally it's your wiki or, or someone like that going in or an all-rounder who probably wants to be aggressive. But, you know, I, I think the only thing, the biggest number one factor I need to impart on any player is understand the game and what does the game and what does your team need from you at a, that exact moment sometimes it's not being brash and you know doing whatever you do sometimes it's about sucking up some balls and, and giving strike to the bloke at the other end but just work out what does your team need and i tell you what if you nine out of ten times do what the team needs i'm telling you a hundred times out of a hundred the coach is always going to back you Super, super. That's it. That's it. So, uh, now coming to Stephen. Uh, Stephen, my question is, <laughs> not my question, actually, question of our player. Uh, this is Rohan Mule, Rohan Mule from Pune, Maharashtra. And his question is, what did you learn from, what did you learn from uh, the particular visiting career which you have spent for uh, Lancashire? And... Uh, as now you have switched to coaching, how you are uh, giving your experiences to the youth? Uh, as right now also you are, I mean, uh, you are not too old. And what what all experiences you are giving to the youth yeah. so that they can make it to the international team? So what was that last bit? Sorry. Shall I repeat it again? Uh, just just the last bit. I, I just missed out. Let me ask you. Uh, his question is, what do you teach to the youth as uh, now you have shifted to the uh, coaching uh, uh, rather than playing? You have spent a lot of time in uh, Lancashire County. And uh, what all uh, your experiences is that you are... Right. We have lost him for a bit. I've got, I've got you back now. 
He just froze. Shall I repeat it? Shall I repeat it once again? Yeah, if you could just repeat uh, repeat the last line in a small crisp manner. <laughs> Uh, the question is from Rohan Mulay. He is from Pune, Maharashtra, and his question is: uh, What experiences, what all experiences you had with the uh, I mean, uh, okay. consistently yes. you have played for Lancashire from uh, 2000 since 2005, and uh, what all experiences you have collected that you are passing to uh, the young generation, to the uh, to your students uh, in you know uh, your coaching, to uh, so that they can make into international team. England. All right, yeah. Yeah, so uh, they alluded to a bit there. So from, from me, just trying to pass on my experiences, really, from, from being that young player in the academy up to, up to the senior level and, and being one of the more experienced ones now oh, with, with over 500 sort of Lancashire games behind me. So, yeah, and I think each, each and every player is different. So you have to coach that person, really. So I've got... I've got the things I like to work on. I like I, I like players who have obviously good basics. You need a good a basic in whatever discipline you're doing, really. But in bowling, feeling for me, I feel you need need to nail your basics down. So, and I think every every, every person's different. So I see it as I've got to coach the person. So I, I want to try and get to know that person really. I don't feel like I can just say right, this works for me. Do this, that works for him. Do the same as him. So I think every individual different so we need to we need to coach them slightly differently as well so yeah trying to get to know that 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 young player so I think a lot of a lot of the early sessions with if I've got a new player is is observing and me watching and, and trying to get to know how they work really uh but but my, no. my main thing I've got at the minute is is, uh, is when I say a new player is make sure that they've got the basics right because I feel like you haven't got the basics right if you can't walk you can't run in my eyes so, uh, as both of our guests are uh, into the coaching uh, right now, so uh, you guys are more like mentors to the players and also uh, both of you have spent a lot of time in cricket. So, uh, every player is quite excited to uh, hear from you, both of you. My next question is from a player, Ajit Jagta. He is from Pune, Maharashtra. And his question is, uh, as he has learned about you, Stephen, uh, you used to do both medium uh, pace ball and the spin as well, isn't it? Yeah, so I started off as a, my roles changed throughout my career. So I started off as, a, as an all-rounder, seam bowling all-rounder. So I started at like six and seven and be the fourth, fourth seamer. Uh, but at Lancashire at that point, we had, we had sort of four or five players, similar age group who who did the same role. So uh, I always bowled a little bit of spin in the net. So it was when we had actually had VVF Laxman at the club. Uh, he said, you should, you should keep bowling that and, and bowl it some more. So yeah, as time went on, I bowled it more. And uh, yeah, eventually I, I went I went over to, to spin and I had a slight, slight sort of niggles in my knees anyway. So, uh, so yeah, it sort of converted it in, into spin. And with that as well, I wasn't bowling as much, obviously uh, conditions... Uh, I had to wait for a spinning pitch, so it, it put more emphasis on my batting. So I had to sort of turn myself into more of a, a middle top order batter uh, to survive, really, in the game because I, I used to bat down near six and seven. So more emphasis was put on my batting, and then obviously I converted to spin. And predominantly you use more in one day cricket than than four days. But uh, but yeah, I just love being involved, whether it be bowling team, spin, and uh, wicket kept for for half a year as well, which I enjoyed as well. <laughs> so his question is: His question is, as he has already uh, studied about you, that you are uh, a pacer, a pacer, medium pacer as well, and a spinner as well. And in the very same day, that particular player, Ajit Jagta, who is from Pune, Maharashtra, he is also a, a spinner turned pace bowler. So he wants to, uh, he wants some uh, tips from you, like while is, while doing spin bowling. The role of uh, shoulder I and mean, uh, the particular pressure on shoulder is very less as compared uh, to the fast bowling. So he wants to know from you what would a bowler should avoid, uh, what would a bowler uh, can do to avoid injuries in shoulder. And he is switching from spin bowling to pace bowling. Okay. I think I think a lot's put on on. Uh 
conditioning now these days. And I think shoulder strength is, is something, it's a little bit like your, your core strength, really. So a lot of the, the little things you do with your band work and your core work helps. And especially with bowlers, they, 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 they go through the mill, unfortunately, fast bowlers. And uh, I think you've got to get yourself as, as strong as possible. And, and, and by that, I mean not physically strong. So you, you're looking like a an Arnold Schwarzenegger. It, it, it's sort of almost... Uh, a fit for purpose strong you've got to be you've got to, you've got to last the whole game and or a whole season so yeah you, your core is, is, is a massive in that and especially shoulder strength as well not just for for bowling for throwing as well we see a lot of players go down with, with shoulders or elbows uh, elbow injuries so I think that, that that plays a big part and, and, and obviously conditioning will, will obviously help with that and, and keep you on the field and, and hopefully keep you have a, having a long career so I think chats with with the medical staff and, and and the fitness staff on on shoulder strength and and like i said that doesn't mean just just pumping out weights it's just stuff like your therabands and and have a, having a nice repeatable action really obviously there's, there's a few there's a few different ones out there but as long as as long as it's comfortable for that person and and, and it's repeatable and and and, and quite well, pretty safe it, it it should be all right really that's good, that's good. Now, uh, let me switch to Ram. And uh, the particular guy who is asking a question is a wicket keeper himself. And uh, his question is, he wants to ask you, which sort of gloves do you prefer while uh, keeping? Long cut or... Okay, just a minute. Yeah. Do you like short or long cut wicket keeping gloves? Um, uh, yeah, nah, I, I'm a very much a short uh, gloves. I, I was a kookaburra man my whole career, so um, we were very lucky to have great gloves. The English style gloves are whole different as well, and it, it's actually interesting with your keeping when you talk to different pe players from around the world. That what they like and what they don't like, and you know, in wicket keeping, and I know Steve said that he, he kept for six months. It's like. Um, you, you have to learn different styles as well. Australians, we, we are brought up uh, catching on the inside of our bodies. In England, you have to catch in front of yourself. And sorry for my daughter who wants to show you what she's <laughs> easy. Um, but um, she'll be, you'll be proud to know she was born in, hey, you, she was born in Holland, but she eats veggie she might. <laughs> the only Australian thing she's got. Um, but yeah, you know, there's there's different styles. Like I say, I, I'm I've always been I like the shorter style. I love the kookaburra gloves that, that that you know did a great job and stuff. But again, it's what you like as a player. It's what fits your hand the best. You know, every wicket keeper has different size hands, for instance. Um, you know, so some gloves will fit better than others. And um, yeah, that that it's just it's like anything. People like different bats, different gear. I know bowlers in particular, you know, they're very quirky with what shoes they like to wear and, you know, what best, what boot best suits them. So, yeah, wicket keeping. What I will say, though, is I, I say this one thing to all our players and I've no doubt in first class cricket and, and professional cricketers and, and it's your tool of trade. If you're a batsman, your batting gear is the tools of your trade. So treat them with respect and make sure you've got the very best that you can have. Uh, keeping gloves, make sure that you know that they're in the best condition. That the the grip on the on the on the um, on the palms aren't wearing. Make sure they are at the top of their game. So, like I say, that you should never be able to blame your tools of your trade and and make sure you look after them. And I'm a bit old like this way, you know. Even though you get a, you're a sponsored player sometimes and you get heaps of stuff, I used to treat everything. Very carefully because I loved it and I knew if I love, I know this sounds a bit weird, but if you love your bats, they'll love you back at, at some point. <laughs> uh, actually, the player's name is Jeet. The particular question was asked by Jeet. He is from Gujarat as well. And uh, he's having one more question to you, Ram, as uh, you were a wonderful batsman of your time and uh, a wonderful wicketkeeper as well. So he wants to ask you. He too wants to become uh, a particular wicket keeper batsman, not only a wicket keeper. But uh, his question is whenever I try, I concentrate on batting, I lose my control over my wicket keeping. And whenever I uh, try to concentrate on my wicket keeping, I lose my control over my batting. So, what shall I do to balance both of the things? Okay, so, so here's the thing that 
you know, through our time, and I think Callow with her Arna was one of the first, really. Look, wicket keepers could always bat, but then Adam Gilchrist and Callow and those sort of guys took it to a whole different level. So, you know, if you want to be a, a genuine all-rounder, that's how you got to see yourself as. As a wicket keeper, you are a genuine all-rounder. And that means you have to spend 50% of your time keeping, 50% of your time batting. Obviously, for me, I would spend more time on my wicket keeping because I felt I was more of a natural batter than I was a wicket keeper. And, and I really need to make sure that I had uh, my skills were right up to it. Um, so, but you, there is no shortcuts. It, it's the facts are. One disappointing thing that I get in um, from a lot of young kids, particularly, is when the coach just says, oh, no, you've got to bat at number seven because you're the wicket keeper. Well, you know, I, I think in today's world, you, you have no reason where you, you can't bat. As a first-class cricketer, I batted from one to seven. Um, you know, I opened the batting to start with, and then when I had to keep, I, I didn't want to bat seven because I, I was a batsman. So, you know, I, I bat, batted four or five for WA at times. Um, Alex Stewart's a great example in English cricket who, you know, used to bat from one to seven as well. So I, I think... You have to show to the coach or to whoever you are that you are a genuine all-rounder and don't just pigeonhole me in one or the other. I can play wherever again. Of course, fitness comes into it. And as Steve would know better than most, you know, playing a four-day game of cricket is hard work. And if you get sent in, or if you sorry, if you're fielding first as a wiki and you're there for a day and a half as the opposition belt out 700, you know, you probably can't physically bat in the top three or four at that time. You probably do need a, a mental break. Um, so, yeah, it may, it's an interesting one. But I, I, th I think the moulds are being broken, but you still need to push it yourself and still prove to your coach or the, your captain or whoever that you can play a significant role in the team as a batsman and batting in any order. Wonderfully answered. Wonderfully answered. Now, uh, coming back to Stephen. Uh, Stephen, I'm having a question from uh, one of our youngest and a good technical batsman. He's from Aurangabad, Maharashtra. Ame Gavi uh, is the name. So, Ame wants to ask you, as uh, he's, uh, you know, more focused in his batting techniques, so uh, he takes some time to come into the aggressive mode. He's an opener batsman. So, uh, he wants to know from you how to change the... Uh, Team technique. I mean, uh, along, along, along with the, along, along with this particular uh, cricketing techniques, how to switch to the aggressive mode? Uh, I think it's one of those. Uh, I think obviously you, you, you've got your mindset, and especially those, those players. If he if he does like to take his time more, that he, he, he might, might might something more suited it and, and does and does well. But going back to what I said earlier about the basics, if he's got the basics right. There's no reason why he can't go through the gears and become a bit more aggressive. But I think this, a lot of it goes with, with, with sort of your mindset and, and each game is different as well. And there's, there's going to be opportunities uh, against certain bowlers. He might have a strength against spin or seam. So there might be a, a, a time in that game where he thinks, right, now's a better time to be a bit more aggressive or maybe a, a time to be a bit more conservative. So it, I think it's hard to say... I'll pinpoint on one thing on, right, I need to do this at, on, at this area. We've had a, I've come across a few, quite a few players, played quite a bit with Hasib Hamid at Lancashire, who went on to play for England and uh, he's just moved to Notts now. He's very conservative in what he does and his, his mindset is to grind down the bowlers and someone like Chanda Paul, played quite a lot of games with, sometimes he'll be scratching around with... Uh, a strike rate next to naught, then all of a sudden a finger spinner comes on and he, he, he just won't let him bowl him. He, 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 he feels he can take him down every ball he bowl. And, and Ashwell Prince was, was similar as well. If, if he was in a, a bit of a rut sometimes and a spinner came on, he, he'd just really go at that spinner because he backed himself and, 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 and got, that, got that confidence to do it. He, he'd done it in training enough to, 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 to pull that off. And, and that's a, a bit of a mindset thing and, and a, a little bit of technical stuff. You have to have the confidence and the ability to do it, but almost in that game to think, right, now, now's my time to go, or it's a certain bowler, or the, the, the game, the situation of the game might, might, might deter that as well. Obviously, if you're in and 
and, you, and you're seeing it well on 60 or 70 runs to your name, it's a lot more easier to then think, right, I can, I can press the accelerator rather than scratching around and, and not in double figures yet. It's, you can maybe seem to be reckless, but I think each individual is different. Uh, but if, if, if they've got a good base and those good basics, there's no reason why you can't eventually go through the gears. Obviously, two, two Australian greats in, in Hayden and Langer, slightly different styles. Uh, one was probably more naturally suited to being aggressive than the other one. Langer, who can obviously catch up a bit, but they're, they're still, still two great players and do it two different ways, really. Oh, oh. <laughs> great, uh, great brainstorming uh, discussions that we are having right now. And I'm sure that most of our viewers and uh, obviously the professional cricketers or the amateur cricketers up, uh, across Western Zone of uh, India would get a lot of brainstorming answers from this particular session. And uh, I would like uh, I would like John to conclude the uh, discussion before we uh, you know head to the last part because I don't want to take a lot of time off your gentlemen and obviously of Ryan because his, bear, his daughter is really troubling him. <laughs> <laughs> so let's, uh, let's uh, conclude this, uh, John, before we have any final verdicts. Uh, uh, no. Uh, questions are there. A lot of questions are there. But uh, now, as uh, Saeed brother told about uh, Ryan's daughter, yes, I think uh, Ryan has to go to her daughter. And <laughs> please share my, please convey my love to the daughter. And no worries. Related, related happy Father's Day to you. So thank you. <laughs> uh, Stephen, are you father as well? Yeah, I've got two two girls, four and. Okay, six super, super, super. Happy Father's Day to you as well, and thank happy you. Father's thank Day you. to you, Saint brother. Yeah. So <laughs> we all are fathers. So uh, yeah. now. <laughs> What I want to say in the conclusion part is this. Uh, I want to tell you guys about uh, a little bit about MCL. MCL is one of its kind. Uh, I mean, this is the first of its kind a reality show. Like this is India's first cricket reality show where we are uh, searching young talents. We came across 10,000, uh, more than 10,000 cricketers across India. And we have shortlisted 156 extraordinary talents, those who were not from the proper cricketing fraternity and they they are amateurs, exactly they are amateurs, they are raw talents and we are into the nurturing process of uh, those particular cricketers. Uh, they are, as I told you, they are extraordinary, they are somewhat exceptional talents and these players will be uh, participating in MCL for 32 live matches and prior to the live matches, there will be 60 episodes of the reality show where we will be featuring their journey, where we will be featuring uh, the selection process. And uh, this is going to be something very exciting as this, this has never happened before in uh, cricket or any other sports. Even uh, Saeed brother is, as I told you, he's a part of our jury. So it was a really brainstorming session and our players, not only our players, anyone uh, who, will, who is going to view this video will get a lot of benefits from the questions we have asked and uh, you both are, uh, especially Ryan, you are an inspiration that if a sports person will take a pledge to come back, he can even come back in his 40s. So <clears throat> it was a really brainstorming and wonderful and interesting session with both of you. So MCL is uh, doing somewhat, uh, you know, uh, sort of talented, not, I'll, I'll not call it talented, uh, rather we are providing a stage where they can showcase their uh, potential in front of the crowd, in front of uh, the audience, television audience, uh, mostly. So <clears throat> I, I'd like uh, Saeed brother to add something for MCL and uh, let's conclude. Right. So uh, yes, Ryan and uh, Stephen. Um, uh, the basic part was about MCL and Fala Cricket Academy and uh, about uh, ever uh, if ever an opportunity occurs wherein like you guys drop into the western zone of Indian cricket you would uh, you are always invited and welcome to uh, me uh, me and John's uh, uh, you know uh, campus yeah, yeah. Cricket Academy as well as uh, the uh, uh, the uh, I would say 
infrastructure about the uh, MCL Cricket and Fallout Cricket Academy. Uh, obviously, we are working with some great names uh, to name a few. Like I'm working currently with Shardul Thakur of India with an online uh, virtual cricket coaching assembly. And obviously, uh, John, is doing a, John is doing a great work for the NHG. I'm really sorry because of my kid really shouting over here. <laughs> so, uh, coming back to the conclusion part, yes, uh, the, uh, there, are, there are a lot of questions uh, pertaining to the amateur cricket players and the professional cricket players who are pretty key, keen to play across the uh, globe. As uh, Ryan said about the United States, I'm closely watching their progress as to they are you know, going ahead and making the stadium and all those activities are in place. So they are doing a very great job. And also the European Cricket League, which is coming into the picture as of right now. So there are a lot of um, you know, engagements and initiations as of right now. And um, obviously to conclude, uh, what I would say is uh, Ryan and Stephen, if ever an opportunity occurs, you are invited to our place, uh, specifically to my academies, which is spread all across Maharashtra. And obviously, uh, towards MCL, which John is nurturing towards what I would say 200, close, uh, 200 plus players. So anytime you want to share your experiences and having your presence would be a delighted one. And uh, <clears throat> uh, pertaining to this session, it was a great one. I would be staying connected with you guys pertaining to the future engagements of the cricket, which I'm uh, going to do with Shardul Talk, which I have spoken about. And also, uh, I believe uh, we will shortly be having Deep Das Gupta as well, who will be working to, uh, with us together. And um, uh, I'll be, uh, you know, touch basing with you guys for any kind of, um, you know, initiations put into the virtual cricket coaching uh, act initiations, which I would say. Right now, I wouldn't uh, give you the entire detail, but then obviously I'll keep in touch with you guys. So. Any part, any uh, particular thing which you would like to conclude, uh, Stephen and Ryan, before we end this? Oh, mate, no, just thanks for having me. Um, it's been great to have a chat. Uh, obviously, the, the, the Netherlands hopefully uh, will be coming to the 2021 World Cup in India, and we might be able to see you there. Great, great. And how about Stephen? Yeah, it was great initially. Well, thanks for having me. And it's great to, I think we're all part of this cricket family, having never met before, but also it's great, great thing in common and a great game. And I'm a big believer of, obviously, Lancashire cricket, India, Netherlands, Australia cricket. It's going to be, it's going to be here for a long time to come and we're just, just parts in it. So I think we're all here. We're going to make the, the cricketing world a better place, hopefully. And like I said, we, we don't know all the answers, but I think we, Leave it in a great place for that next generation coming through. I think that's that's the way I see our duty is, is to is to keep growing this game and, and and this next generation coming through. We are gonna gonna hopefully reap the benefits and it's, it's a brilliant game to be involved in and, and and obviously see a lot of the world and see some great people in it as well. Right, Lee Stead, Stephen. So thank you, gentlemen. Thank you for uh, spending your time with me and uh, it was a wonderful discussion. So until the next time when we connect back. Uh, it would be a buy from my end. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. See you, man. Thank you. Thank you. Love to meet you. Bye bye. Cheers, boys.